Lore Keeper, Starfinder Archives, Castravel the Wild, The Green, Briefly Explained. Greetings and salutations, travelers, and welcome back to the Inn of Planar Crossroads. Today our Lore Keeper series continues as we present the basic information about the second planet in the Pack Worlds system. Now it has been brought to our attention that a book has recently come out for this region of space in the Starfinder setting, but since we didn't have that at the beginning of this series, we will be limiting our source books for the information presented to the Starfinder core rulebook and the Distance World source book for Pathfinder. This will help us maintain a consistency through our videos and fit the briefly explained part of our series title though we may at some point in the future come back and present the more detailed information should the demand become great enough. Without further ado, let us begin. Castravel the Wild, the Green Diameter, 1 Mass, 1 Gravity, 1 Atmosphere, Normal Day, 24 hours, year, one half. The world of Castravel is the complete opposite of Avalon, where the forge is rocky and bare, the wild's thick blanket of atmosphere traps the sun's energy and makes the surface a lush, steamy paradise. Hot, humid, and stirred by intense storms and tides, the verdant ecosystems of Castravel abound with an unusually robust variety of life. Jungles dominate the planet's surface, full of great broad-leafed trees that occasionally stretch several hundred feet into the air, with some branches large enough to support a house, or else cluster in masses so thick that the sun can barely penetrate to the floor of strange and primeval swamps where gnarled mangrove-like roots form worlds and hollows housing all manner of creatures. Oceans of colored mists and gas vie with more conventional seas to provide habitats for innumerable species, from cannibalistic selkies and schools of semi-intelligent fish to elephantine isopods that trundle across the sea floor the cracks in their glowing armor providing safe havens for delicate seahorse-like symbiotes. Environmentally, Castravel is a welcoming world to most civilized races from across the universe, with its tropical climates, familiar gravity, and rich, breathable atmosphere. Food is never a problem, as the jungles, rivers, and mountain valleys are bursting with edible plants and animals. Yet it's the same fertility that makes adventuring here so dangerous. Because of the seemingly endless supply of consumables and the oxygen-rich environment, both plants and animals tend to grow larger here than on similarly sized planets. From enormous saurian horrors and segmented centipede ticks, to bug-eyed mountain eels and the poison-beaked skyfishers, Castravel boasts countless megafauna predators easily capable of consuming a humanoid. Some even consider the inviting environment itself to be a predator. A closer, larger moon means that tides and ocean waves are more extreme, and the high-pressure atmosphere means that winds can be far stronger than on planetoids of a similar size. In addition to great hurricanes and other storms capable of scouring the landscape at hundreds of miles per hour, the wet wind is also conductive to mold storms, in which fields of voracious molds and fungi release their spores into the air, creating a roiling cloud of decay that coats and consumes all organic matter in its path. These megafauna and environmental effects especially the mountain eels and skyfishers, still regularly trouble settlements on Castravel, which leads to occasionally accidental burning of protected natural regions in rural areas, but a strong Xeno Warden presence usually keeps such activities from getting out of hand. 
The abundance of seemingly untouched wilderness on Castravale often confuses newcomers used to cutting-edge La Junta technology. Yet to most of the world's residents, these vast ecological preserves are proof of their enlightened society. To them, maintaining wilderness is key to advancing knowledge and allowing the same evolution that brought them to sentience to continue uplifting others, and the planet's abundant natural resources must be harvested sustainably for the good of all. Toward this end, most of the planet's primary shipyards and its most destructive heavy industries are regulated to El Indre, the planet's aforementioned airless rocky moon. The planet's strong connection to natural energies also seems to make it a fertile breeding ground for scions and telepaths of various races. As mentioned, on Castravale, not all seas are made of water. The ocean of mist, which stretches for hundreds of miles and nearly divides the great continent of Asana, is an anomaly that researchers have yet to completely understand. A vast canyon network filled with multicolored mists that roil and splash like an actual ocean. Held apart by some indeterminate magical or magnetic field, the microscopic droplets always maintain a constant distance between each other, leaving enough room for air to slip between them, yet maintaining enough pressure that even simple flat-bottom sailing vessels or paddle boats equipped with gas bags for buoyancy can cross them safely. Though drowning in the mist sea is believed to be impossible, any would-be sailors must note that it's only their ship's specially engineered shapes that keep them afloat, and deckhands who are swept overboard may find themselves falling slowly to the murky depths, their bodies too dense for swimming, and thus facing a long walk back to land. Some divers take advantage of this fact, dropping down on long ropes to explore and salvage without need of suits or gear. Yet the tendency for such ropes to come back frayed or bitten off at the ends, with no signs of the divers, discourages most tourists. Of the many sentient races to make their home on the fertile world, the most prominent are Lashuntas followed closely by Elves and Formians. All three civilizations are highly connected and cosmopolitan thanks to a network of ancient magical teleportation portals called Ayudara, literally translated as Elf Gates. While all planets in this packed world system contain strange magical portals linking the worlds together, the Lashunta warrior scholars learned the workings of these gates long ago especially the ones connecting Akaton and Castravel. Because of this, the two planets have the closest relationship of any in the solar system, with Lushunta scholars particularly fond of sharing ideas with the enigmatic contemplatives of Ashok. Perhaps it was in response to the Lushunta's mastery of the interplanetary gates that the elves of Sovirin invented the Ayudara. Traditionally, Castravel's Lashuntas have organized into independent city-states, with a variety of governmental styles, elected matriarchs being the most common. In the modern era, however, local governance of smaller cities often takes a backseat to larger corporate concerns, with regional or interplanetary companies buying out officials or setting up their own independent, privatized settlements. While these economic ties mean Lashunta nationalism rarely leads to outright warfare anymore, rampant industrial espionage and corporate influence over public policy present growing concern for residents. Of the city-states still capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with corporate power, the most significant is Quabrat, the shining jewel of the Western Sea and the planet's largest spaceport. From the city's threefold house, Lady Morana Kesh and her chief consort, Granteus, pull a delicate web of strings to keep the planet from becoming a corporate free-for-all. Also notable for their power and influence are the city's many universities, renowned for their vast pre-gap archives, 
They train some of the best explorers, researchers, and starship navigators in the system. Architecturally, the city is a work of art. Its ancient walls of crushed and glittering shells blending seamlessly with modern additions. This sense of timelessness, of connection with the planet's long history, is a matter of pride to many of the residents, who exult in the sounds of soldiers training in the battle yards, scholars arguing good-naturedly on university steps, or the roar and hiss of the landing starships that have largely replaced water-going vessels in Ship's End. While most visitors to the planet enter through Quabarat's port, numerous portals throughout the city connect it closely with other powerful Ashunta settlements, such as isolated Lao Bu Mesa, Komina in the Floating Shards, Jabask the Unbroken, or Canderes, with its endless waterfalls and dangerous cliffside corpsicum excavations. Though the insectile Formians battled with Lashuntas for millennia, the coming of the Pact and careful Shireen brokered peace talks finally ended hostilities a mere 30 years ago. Today, the Formian hives, known collectively as the colonies, work together to farm the land and trade with other races, with each individual hive queen paying tribute to the Over Queen, a purely philosophical entity established during the historic Meeting of Queens. Each of the largest Formian hive burrows can cover miles, sometimes bulging up in artificial honeycombed hills, making it confusing to visit and historically impossible to conquer. At odds with this new era of peace, the Elves of Sovirin are predominantly xenophobic traditionalists, trading with outsiders only when necessary. Members of other races are rarely allowed to settle permanently on the Elven continent and are largely barred from even entering the fertile valley near Sovereign's geographical center where lies El, Sovereign's canal-choked capital city led by neighborhood-sized great houses. This border control is regularly violated by the city's own ruling elite, however, as they hire foreigners for secretive or specialized tasks. The Elven Nation occupies one of the smaller continents on Castravel, separated from the lands of the Lashuntas and most other intelligent creatures by a wide and treacherous ocean. So racked is this oceanic moat by tropical storms that the Elves who live in Sovirin rarely attempt to cross it by physical means, which perhaps also contributed to the creation of the Ayudara in the first place. The following locations may be of interest when visiting the wild planet of Castravel. The Colonies El The Ocean of Mists Quabarat Laubu Mesa Comina Jabask Canderes Thank you for joining us for another installment of our Lore Keeper series. We're planning to continue through the Starfinder Core Rulebook setting information, so stay tuned for more of that. If you enjoy this content but want to see it more often, click over to our Patreon, which you can find a link to in the description below, and see if one of our varied tiers and rewards fit within your budget. If you liked this video, let us know by liking, commenting, sharing, or subscribing. You can find us on a variety of social medias, including Facebook and Twitter. We also have a Twitch for those who want to watch our live games and Around the Hearth discussions before they reach YouTube. And then there is our own website, inofplanarcrossroads.com that you can visit at your leisure. Links to all these are, of course, in the description of the video. That is all we have for now, travelers. So, as always, have a great day, God bless, and enjoy. This content was made possible by the generous support of patrons and travelers like you. Thank you.